I moved to New York 10 years ago. Um, I moved to New York 10 years ago because I thought I was going to be an actor. In my training to become an actor, I was working with a teacher who noticed there was something off about the quality of my sound. So he recommended I go for for imaging. He recommended I get my, my larynx imaged, looked at. So anyway, I went and they slithered a small camera. They threaded up my nose and down my throat to examine my vocal cords. And what they found was I had vocal notes. The doctors said I had been pushing. The doctors said I had been speaking too hard. So they sent me to a speech therapist. So this speech therapist, she gave me a straw to put between my lips. We would stand at this mirror and and blow. Most of my work with her was blowing air through my lips, through my mouth. At some point, I stopped going to her. At some point, I stopped going to her, but I don't really remember why I stopped. I think I just stopped going. I can never remember my mother's body. When she visits, when I visit, whenever I see her after a long while, I am surprised by her form, the details of her shape. My memory always a little bit wrong, two inches to the left of her. But her voice I remember. Her voice is always the same. In Ann Carson's essay, The Gender of Sound, Carson explains that from Aristotle, we are told, the high-pitched voice of a female is one evidence of her evil disposition. Woman, as a species, is frequently said to lack the ordering principle of sophrocene, sophrocene being a masculine virtue, the use of moderation and self-control in speaking. Carson observes, the women of classical literature are given to disorderly and uncontrolled outflow of sound. She then goes on to describe the ancient Greek and Roman medical theory, an anatomical discussion that a woman has two mouths. Both the vocal and the genital mouth are connected to the body by a neck. Both mouths provide access to a hollow cavity, which is guarded by lips that are best kept closed. In 2008, a French speech pathologist published a study on premenstrual vocal syndrome and its effect on opera singers. In addition to swollen or painful breasts, pelvic pain, cramps, nausea, mood swings, excessive perspiration, hot flashes, migraines, acne, diarrhea, back pain, insomnia, etc., menstruation affects one's vocal cords. According to the study, symptoms of premenstrual vocal syndrome include the loss of vocal power, range, and harmonics, drier vocal cords, and a reduced ability to sing pianissimo. To have a voice means you must also have a body. The body, too often an unruly thing. I have been thinking about my body about my mother's body, about my mother's mother's body, whatever body we may share. Once in high school, I walked in on my mom in her bathroom, sitting on the floor, crying, naked and pathetic. Wet hair, breasts sagging over her belly, her pubic hair long. She was holding her head and rocking, crying because she fell because she slipped. 
She looked up at me, tears streaming down her face, and she yelled at me to get out. She yelled at me to go away. We had been fighting about something. I remember thinking how human she looked to me then. I remember thinking, that's my mom. To whom do you belong? The search for clarity needs no explanation. A few weeks ago, we spent an afternoon talking, my grandma, my mom, and me. It was difficult for many reasons. Without saying it, without saying it at all, we talk about our coping mechanisms, the ways each of us have learned to get along with the world. What's important to me in my relation with her, with them, is to learn to exist. The next day, I got on a plane. As the plane took off, I tried to imagine holding hands with all of my past and future selves, with all of my mothers, with all of my grandmothers. Back in Brooklyn, I couldn't shake the aftertaste of that conversation. I felt deviant, haunted. Trying to uncover something of myself, something murky of myself, generally leads to seeing something else about me I don't like. I wanted us to speak truthfully. Instead of spoke, speaking truthfully, I spoke badly. I regretted it. I behave irresponsibly and convince myself the behavior is not irresponsible, but rather an act of politics, radical queerness, a spreading of my legs, perpetual becoming. I want grit and I want depth. My mother has a soft voice. My mother has a soft and high pitched voice. She often struggles often strains to be heard. Being female can feel frivolous, my own body a betrayal. Body and mind, intellect and desire, there is no longer a way for me to frame these as discrete categories. All of my untidy wishes, my moods, the plurality of spirit, my body, my bodies, each of us expanding. What part of me is you? Is you, 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 is you. And how to get there, how to get there, how to get there.